Welcome to Sudden Impact Boss Talk Live, where we have real business owners, real entrepreneurs, real questions, real answers, and real advice for you um, if you're looking to start your own business or already have your own business in place. I'm Tristan Sudden, owner of the Sudden Insurance Agency Incorporated here in Houston, where your business is our business and we specialize in helping business owners. Um, I started this Boss Talk series to help provide a conduit for those wanting to learn more about what it's really like to be an entrepreneur and be a boss um, from the real world aspect and give you real stories and real suggestions. Um, not something that you just may see on YouTube or Facebook, but something that's has substance and, con and content from real business owners. So um, let's get started today. We have Fern Dawkins. Hi. How you doing today? I'm well. How are you, Thanks Tristan? Thanks for making a journey up here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit about Fern. She owns a Smoothie King franchise in Old Pearland. Um, she's coming up to a year of ownership and has one of the top producing Smoothie King franchises in the nation. Um, so I know a lot of people are interested in starting their own business. Um, don't know whether they should go franchise route, traditional, start your own concept route. So I got her here to talk to you about what it is she did to get started, how she became successful, and then just kind of give you some words of advice. So if you have some questions that you want um, asked, be sure to type them in uh, while we're going. So let's get started because we got a lot of content today. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Fern. Sure. So I'm Fern Cardi Dawkins, and my company is Jam Cardi Holdings. That's my holdings company that actually owns my Smoothie King franchise. Okay. And um, I'm a lawyer by trade. I practice in-house for four years with a Fortune 500 company. I supported um, their pharmacy and health and uh, health and wellness division. So you could call me a healthcare lawyer. Hmm. Or, or a transactional attorney because what I did was primarily uh, draft agreements and negotiate contracts and that sort of thing. So okay. transactional lawyer. Gotcha. Um, but did that for four years and then decided to um, go out on my own and get into franchising. Hmm. And so I've been doing that now for two years. Nice, nice. So what led you to Smoothie King? So I, I remember the first time I walked into a Smoothie King. I was 19, I was still in college at Emory University, mm -hmm. and uh, it was the location on Claremont Road. And I remember I walked in and I, I couldn't understand the menu. It seemed for more geared towards people that worked out a lot or mm -hmm. really buff, there was protein, all this kind of stuff. And so I was looking confused and the guy said to me, he was like, um, hey, uh, you know, you know what are you looking for? I was like, I really don't know. I I can't kind of sort of make out the menu. And he was like, Well, don't worry. I'll make you a smoothie that will change your life. Hmm. And it was so crazy because I thought, Who describes a smoothie that right. way? This wasn't like a steak at some like great steakhouse <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, and he made me the Caribbean way, which Smoothie King still carries. Okay. And um, I remember thinking, This is so amazing. And I don't know if it's because he said that to me or what, but I remember thinking, That's so delicious. And I would go to Smoothie Kings and order that smoothie for years. You know, before mm -hmm. I even tried anything else on the menu. But um, anyway, fast forward to, you know, two years ago when I decided to get into franchising. One of the things I learned from the company that I worked for is, you know, you have to believe in your business and understand it very well. Right. You have to be able to stand behind your product. Right. So for me, as a franchisee, you're getting behind sort of someone else's product, right? right. You're buying into the blue, you're licensing the blueprint. Right. And so I thought, well, what business do I like believe in that I love? Mm -hmm. And Smoothie King popped in mind. Mm -hmm. I also liked that it was sort of a smaller format. It's not yeah. as big as like a McDonald's or right. a hotel or Less something like that. Less capital to start Right. Up. Small footprint, that kind of thing. And so that's how I got started with Smoothie King. Awesome. 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 So for those that may not know, um, she said she has a holding company that her Smoothie King is parked under. So. Last week or a couple of weeks ago, we had someone talk about LLCs and things of that nature. Yeah. So could you explain to those um, watching the benefits and the pros and cons of having a holding company that your business is parked under? Okay, so I'll explain that sort of two different ways. Using the cons, the um, titling a co your company as a holdings company mm -hmm. sort of indicates that perhaps you are in several different areas of business. Mm -hmm. And so I would have, my goal is to have several franchises, Smoothie Kings, but maybe other brands as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I started Jam Cardi Holdings as the parent company mm -hmm. for other businesses that I plan to buy. And um, you know, my husband's into real estate and so we have real estate holdings and we do some other things. So mm -hmm. that just gave me a bit of an umbrella to, to park my various franchises under. And then if we decided to do other things, mm -hmm. we could still kind of keep it logically under you know one company but um, you know 
sort of piggybacking on the conversation you guys had last time about LLCs and so forth, it does make sense uh, if you're starting a business, particularly if you're going into franchising, to um, establish an LLC mm -hmm. or some form of a corporation, whatever makes sense for what you're doing, um, to park your business under, like you said, um, for liability reasons, right. uh, for tax purposes, and so forth. When you get into business, uh, you take on certain uh, duties and responsibilities, liabilities, and so forth, that you may not want to take on personally. Right. And there are ways to protect yourself from that, and then uh, to sort of have your business operate on its own, if you will. And so um, there's the liability safety, of course, which I think is, uh, you know, sort of premier, but then, you know, there are also uh, uh, tax advantages and so forth, Absolutely. sort of separating yourself. And so that's always a good thing to do. You don't want to take those liabilities when you're taking a business out to the public and bring that on yourself and your person. Absolutely. So when forming your own business, whether it's a franchise or um, you know self-sustained entity, make sure you park it under something that's going to help protect you personally. Sure. LLC, S Corp, get with your attorney and your accountant mm -hmm. for their advice. But um, don't just be out there as a sole entrepreneur your entire business um, sure. you know lifetime because you need that protection so um, great so tell us a little bit about franchising and employee uh, employment management and things of that nature how, how fun is that for you <laughs> <laughs> it's tons of fun actually um, so I mentioned I'm, I'm an attorney by trade right and I like to I think I, I think I'm traditional in that way because I'm one of those attorneys like I color in the lines so mm -hmm. I like follow rules I like framework I like structure right. And I did agreements. So I'm very black and white, right? right. So getting into franchising, mm -hmm. especially the type that I'm in, which is a food service franchise, right. um, where you have several employees, um, that was that was challenging for me. Prior to that, I had perhaps maybe managed like my assistant or my paralegal. So uh, the majority of my employees are teenagers, mm, gotcha. <laughs> which is all, which also makes it interesting. But I do have a manager that works for me, and I do have folks that are you know over eighteen that work for me. But yeah, it was definitely a learning curve. I will say that I just got on the roller coaster and buckled up. Gotcha. I wish I could say that I. Um, had some kind of great experience or there here was this book I read or here was this managing employees framework but there really wasn't I think what I um, what I've done and I think what works for me mm -hmm. is you know I believe in treating people the way you want it to be treated mm -hmm. so in any circumstance if somebody's gonna work for you or do something for you you know um, you would treat them the way you would want to be treated if you Absolutely. were providing the same service to somebody else in exchange for payment or what have you so that's always my first approach mm -hmm. I um, I also recognize that I couldn't run that Smoothie King by myself. Absolutely. Um, especially with a view towards owning several, you know, I'll be very removed from the day to day of that business, right? I wouldn't be in there, in it managing it, for example. So I try to set the tone with. So that's where we go from being self employed to being an entrepreneur. When you don't have to work in your business, you can work on your business on your or business. businesses. So, Absolutely. Um, that was a good point. I just wanted to point out. Go yeah, ahead. no, for sure. And we can talk about that a bit some more. But so what I try to do is set a framework that managers that I hire, mm -hmm. um, they sort of can repeat that uh, going forward. So we, w I want a workplace where employees are treated fairly, right. where you know they're cared about, uh, where there are a set of rules that they understand. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I endeavor to. Um, understand my employees what makes them tick what incentivizes them mm -hmm. and um, you know and do that I let them know I can't run this store by myself right. I'm doing it because you're here right so let's work together to make money because the more money this store makes the more I have to share with you guys exactly. and so my team uniquely understands that mm -hmm. and um, uh, I think they feel invested in the business with me which is important because then I know that they'll treat it you know with some degree of care in the same way that That's I would yeah Absolutely. So make sure that whether whether whatever business you're in, that your employees know that it's a win-win uh, for all parties involved, and so that you all um, can talk to your staff and what is it that motivates them, incentivizes them to go to above an extra mile, absolutely. Um, so just showing up and just doing what's needed. Um, so let's talk backtrack a little bit now. Yeah. now one of the perks of owning a franchise is you kind of get a business in a box. They kind of yes. give you a lot of templates and things like that. Definitely. Um, so did your particular uh, franchise, they not provide that, or is it kind of common that they don't give you the template for managing staff, employee handbooks, and things of that nature? Right. So every franchise is different. Right. And um, even though I've looked into other franchises, obviously the majority of my experiences with Smoothie King. So mm -hmm. this this might be limited a limited view for those of you out there who maybe own franchises or have looked into others. But... Um, from, so from my view, Smoothie King does a really good job of giving you a framework of how to operate your business. Right. So they give you the tools for operational success. Mm -hmm. 
Um, they do touch on sort of the management piece of that and the people piece of that and they, uh, in their management training, for example, they'll go over, um, you know, how to deal with employees and, and they, they'll give tidbits. It's nothing intense by any stretch of the imagination. And um, on some level, they're also trying to separate their role as franchisor. They don't want to take responsibility for things gotcha. that are beyond their control and gotcha. then expose themselves. So um, to the extent that maybe someone's looking at a franchise and they don't see uh, certain uh, guidelines that they wish they had, mm -hmm. there's probably a reason for that. The franchisor is basically saying, I'm going to license you, you know, my recipes, my name, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, I'm going to tell you what colors to wear, people recognize and they'll show up. But in terms of how you deal with how you pay people, what you pay mm -hmm. them, um, and so forth, you're kind of on your own. Gotcha. Um, but but, but uh, somebody came did a really good job of at least setting up a framework that makes sense for the business that we could sort of take a look at and, 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 and work with. So that was very helpful. Okay, good. So. You said you did a lot of research on different franchises. So for those that are looking into some right now, um, give them some, um, I guess, some items of what to look for when going and applying for franchise opportunities and maybe some things that they should stay away from. Sure. Um, my, my biggest piece of advice, I started um, l looking into this after I kind of knew in my heart I wanted to go with Smoothie King, mm -hmm. but um, Entrepreneur Magazine puts out a franchise 500. Mm -hmm. Uh, similar to the Fortune 500, if you will, and they sort of list the top 500 franchises, uh, and you can sort them on the website uh, via, uh, you know, industry, cost, cost whatever, something. you know, there, there's so many different ways to search it, which I really like. Mm -hmm. So you can search by industry, you can search by what the franchise fee is, mm -hmm. what the total cost of investment is. Um, and so forth. And there's a gamut, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen uh, franchises as cheap <laughs> it's yes. $2,500 to I've buy it. Well. $2,500 $2, is, 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 is still money but by comparison and then those yeah. that were the franchise fees like upwards of a million dollars right yeah. so there's truly I think can be something for everybody and for every budget in franchising Absolutely. and um, they will rank them and rate them you can read reviews about them through that website and so forth um, but I think the best way to get to know a franchise is to go ahead on their website, apply for their franchising packet, hmm. um, read it, and then if you can, go to what they would call a discovery day or something like that. Right, they usually right. hold like a, a meet and greet, if you will, where they let you come to their corporate headquarters. Yeah. I think so much can, you will learn so much about who your franchisor is by going to that. And it's gonna cost you a plane ticket or a long drive, right. but it's worth it. Yeah. So, reach out to the company via their website, Asked to go to what, what Discovery is? Day, Discovery Day, mm -hmm. and that way you can get a chance to actually meet them beyond what you see on Google and their website. Ask about the fees. What does it include? Because sometimes franchise fees it includes maybe some of your build out and equipment, right. or some of it's just that's how much money you need to be able to hang our name on your door. Sure. Um, so every franchise is different, but make sure if you're looking into one seriously, check into their Discovery Day. Definitely. So tell us a little bit about your marketing and things of that nature. How did you get to the point where you're one of the top? in the nation yeah before i say that okay. i want to say one more important thing also make sure you talk to other franchisees mm. so if you're interested exactly. in building a subway walk into subways mm. ask them is the manager here or the owner here sometimes they'll be there they'll be in the back talk to them and ask them about yeah. their experience that's key uh marketing well actually you are at a good point um <laughs> make sure you don't do one right next door to where you plan to open right, <laughs> right. that's one thing <laughs> that's true um Secondly, um, before I started my agency, I actually went to visit 10 agents mm, before I opened good idea. Um, because I own a previous insurance agency. I'm not affiliated with this company I'm under now. Right. Um, I only asked like one or two people to say, oh, it's great, it's beautiful. Found out it wasn't what I was Yikes. looking for. Right. So I wanted to, I've wanted to found five successful agents and five struggling or failed agents. Mm. I wanted to know what did they do wrong possibly? Uh, what were their challenges and what did the people winning do right? And so I just was able to make a, a formed decision based on those two composites of information um, and get to a point where we're in our sixth year coming this November. So, That's awesome. Um, great point. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, how did you become one of the top um, in the organization? By the grace of God. Amen. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> um, so let me say this. Different to, because I know in the previous uh, shows like this that you've done with other entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they've talked a lot about social media and marketing, and it's a huge piece, which I totally get. Right. Um, when you're in a franchise, it's sl slightly different mm -hmm. because you're buying into, and part of your franchise fee and royalties that you pay to the company will pay for their national marketing campaign, 
right? So you're in a business that's already probably having a national television commercials. They have radio ads and they'll have billboards and things like that. So on some level, you're already paying for a lot of the legwork to be done for you. Gotcha. You'll also be assigned a marketing consultant like specific to your area. So I have a Houston area marketing consultant, consultant that I can literally call and say, hey, you know, we just celebrated our one year for my flagship store. So I'll call and say, it's our one year, what should we do? And she has a list already of here, here are things other franchisees have done, here's what works well, here's some promotions you can do, and I can follow through. Okay. So the marketing piece is kind of a no-brainer. On the somewhat so put a pin in that right and then so then you know that's enough to get you a, a store that's doing really well so how do you do extraordinarily well right because in our business I mean that's our goal right you want to be better than the rest want to be above average above you know better than people want to come to my smoothie king as opposed to the one down the street and why is that and um, so we do uh, things like we do sampling to businesses. So I'll have my team put some samples together, drop them off at local businesses nearby mm -hmm. um, to let them know that we're there gotcha. or just to let them sample a smoothie. Somebody in that office may have never thought to try one gotcha. of our smoothies. And so, so we do a lot of that door-to-door -door marketing, which really works. Um, we're very active with schools. We volunteer, do that kind of thing. I think that uh, for Smoothie King, they do really well with a community feeling invested in that particular location. So a lot of grassroots marketing. Lots of grassroots okay. marketing, yeah. Sort of the media piece of it uh, is kind of taken care of by the national campaign. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so don't need to be on Facebook all the time like no. me. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so, not at all. Not at all, not at all. So if you're looking to grow your business, keep in mind grassroots marketing is still yeah. effective. Um, and viable even now, in 2016. I do have a local Facebook page for right. my Smoothie King Pearland Parkway and we will send promotions or if it's a rainy day mm -hmm. we'll say here Pearland it's it's yeah. raining you guys should come and get a dollar for your smoothie we'll do things like okay. that so social media is not irrelevant at all gotcha. um, but it's not gonna be like your number the one yeah. source gotcha gotcha so tell us a little bit about what makes you want to open several more franchises instead of pouring more into this one franchise, your flagship, and making it larger? What makes you want to say, I want three, four, five? More money. More money? That's it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we're talking to business owners, right? I mean, that's the goal. Right. You know, we all want to make more money. Right. Um, I don't think there's a situation where you're ever like, you know what, I'm making just enough money and I don't care to do anything further to the extent that you have we all get comfortable right. but once and you might coast in in that level of comfort for a while and Absolutely. that's fine but um, if if you're an entrepreneur something in you already wanted more so it's probably not something that's going to leave you gotcha. so yeah certainly uh, growing an empire has you know financial rewards and so forth awesome. um, I eventually want to have a nonprofit arm attached to my business mm -hmm. and do some other things so you need okay. money to fund that Absolutely. so that's a primary driver but um, for me, what gets me out of bed every day and why I went into franchising, and if I'm being honest, I didn't know this at the outset. Mm -hmm. I, I, I figured this out about four months ago, it's clear as day. What gets me out of bed every day is being able to create opportunities mm -hmm. for others. Right. And, um, you know, I manage that store because I'm, I'm a lawyer and I know nothing about making smoothies or operating anything, right? So, I, so I for managed, that reason, law school, that was kind of close to a smoothie, right? Right. So, you know, I um, I wanted to manage the store because I thought if I'm going to be good at this business, I need to know everything, how it runs, how the inventory works. I need right. to know who the customers are. So I spent three months managing the store myself. And then from there, I was able to promote someone who started with me as a team member. And now she manages the store and uh, she does an incredible job. And um, I finally was able to put her on salary. She started off hour hourly. She has health benefits. And, you know, she tells me that's been significant for her and i think in that moment when she said that to me because i guess i hadn't thought about it yeah. you know in my mind she earned it right? right um i thought you know this is what's cool about this and so um with that in mind um that creates also creates the drive to want to have more stores because you know you can have a greater impact gotcha. and create better and different and newer opportunities going forward gotcha now she says something key there which i say in pretty much every episode it's all about people and processes. Yeah. So you couldn't manage several other op operations unless you had the right people in place. Right. You couldn't promote that lady that you were talking about unless you have processes in place right. to where you can just manage the processes versus managing the people. Meaning uh, McDonald's, 
no matter where you go, you're going to get the same Big Mac. Was it a quarter pounder with sesame seed bun, two all American beef patties, <laughs> special sauce? It's a process. You know that recipe. It's a process. Yeah. Uh, but just like many other franchises, so I, I keep harking that. That's how you transition from being self-employed to an entrepreneur. I mean, you skipped probably about a year and a half worth of hurdles because most people have to pay their dues yeah. and grind in their business for like a year to two. Then they get the team and the process in place and they can kind of unplug themselves. But she right. said she did that the first quarter of the-, of the Those three month. months weren't no joke now. No, like no, I came, not. came home at night, fruit in my hair, <laughs> you know, at 11 o'clock at night, woke juices up, and drove in five- Juices, juices and, and berries. berries. <laughs> Lots of juices and berries. You know, getting yelled at by customers, messing yeah. things up, you know. Yeah. So um, it didn't come without um, yeah. a few hard knocks. Uh, it was always gonna be a hard knock. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, but you do have to pay your dues when becoming an entrepreneur. Um, I know some people say, hey, they open their door and it's beautiful, great, they're yeah. balling right from the get-go. You have to pay your dues uh, unless you're in some magical business I don't know about. Right. Sign me Call up me. also. I'll put it under my <laughs> holding company. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, you definitely have to be prepared to pay those dues um, going forward. Definitely. Um, so tell us a little bit about some of the processes that allowed you to unplug yourself and then manage this phenomenal team member from afar. Okay, so I think I'm going to speak really uniquely to the, uh, the Smoothie King store, but I okay. think uh, some of these things translate for other businesses. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I can't take credit for this thought because I got it from other franchisees, but I opened my store mm -hmm. and hired only team members. So in a Smoothie King structure, you have a team member, a shift leader, an assistant manager, and a manager, right? Mm -hmm. I hired every employee I needed, every employee I needed as, as a team member, okay. and I was the manager, and that was it. And I told them at the outset, number one, I think it's very important to set very clear expectations. Okay. So when they came in for their interview, I already told them, you know, my name is Fern. This is my first Smoothie King. They knew I was a lawyer. They knew that I wanted to open several more Smoothie Kings. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunity for somebody to become shift leader, assistant, a manager, manager was imminent. Yeah, and I was true. looking for that. Yeah, so true. I told them that in the beginning. So this wasn't a place to just come and kind of lollygag. Um, you know, here's a place if you're a go-getter, you know, if you want to come get it, like I'll, I'll, I'll put it in there for you because that helps me ac accelerate my business. Gotcha. So I didn't, I didn't make any bones about that. I told them that I wanted us to be the best. I told them that I wanted us to be in the King's Club in our first year, which is Smoothie King's um, sort of special club for stores that gross over half a million dollars. And I was like, there's no reason why we can't do that in our first year. You know, so I told them I was very ambitious and I let them know on, on the outset. Uh, and so I think that um, it attracted people who felt like like my store manager who mm -hmm. hadn't worked, um, you know, in three years mm -hmm. and was just kind of applying around. She found, saw my Facebook mm -hmm. ad and, you know, she saw an opportunity for her to excel and she took it. And I think that's what you have to do. You have to incentivize people and, um, kind of like survival of the fittest, the cream will rise to the top. And Absolutely. that's what happened. So nobody, everybody came in the same. And then the ones that really wanted it, they showed up. And then you can promote them. Gotcha. The problem with hiring team members and then shift leaders and a manager already is that they don't have any incentive to do any better. Maybe the title gets in their head, that kind of yeah. thing. Correct. So you get to see who's really worth it. And so that worked really well for me. Okay. So she took the Spartan approach, 300. So Basically. we're going to put you all in the field. Real and cutthroat. Whoever, Rises to the top. Yeah. Okay, I like that concept. Yeah. Uh, may not work for everyone's business, but keep in mind, <laughs> for some people it does work. But yeah, and um, in a franchise context, and where you have to hire a bunch of people at once, if you right, can, right. I think that makes sense. Okay, gotcha. So, I know some franchise business owners start one franchise, learn the model, learn all the inner workings, and then try to start their own, like mm -hmm. fern smoothie or something like that. So, um, what are your thoughts on that? Don't bet your money on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am not thinking up my own smoothie recipes by any stretch of the imagination. Okay. I tell people all the time, I think why I got into franchising was because I recognized early on that I didn't have a, a talent. Mm. So, like, I, so I don't do hair. I don't bake okay. anything. I like to cook, but I mean. Just, but you're not going to open for Right. You're not going to. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't have like a. Uh, a, a business or, or, or something or a, a thing that I wanted to sort of create on my own that was never my ambition I don't, I don't see it I don't see that happening gotcha. um, so what I loved about franchising was it already gave me a blueprint and a framework and I mm -hmm. knew I could operationalize another business right um, and so that's why I like it. it takes the guesswork out of it for okay. me um, and so like I say I found my passion in other things like giving people opportunities and so my passion doesn't lie in maybe promoting some great idea of my own that I have if that makes sense okay mm -hmm. so talk to us about funding uh, were you self-funded did you have to go get loans or things of that nature 
Um, how did you open the doors for your first, your flagship? Yeah, and you know, I think this is such an important question and I think it's something that we don't um, always get honest feedback from, from entrepreneurs. So I, I, wanna, I wanna keep it real here if I Please can. Do. So I was self-funded mm -hmm. and then I made a choice mm -hmm. to take an SBA loan Okay. so as not to further tie up any more of my funds. Gotcha. That was a business decision, right. right? You can, you know, anybody that'll tell you to, th well, I, I shouldn't say that. You can throw your entire life savings into a business, but yeah. it may not be the smartest move. And you know, you're <laughs> kind of taking a huge risk. Right. But I understand, I'm sure you understand, and you uh, at home looking at this know if you're an entrepreneur that you kind of have this thing, like this business is gonna fly, mm -hmm. right? right? So I'm not gonna try to, uh, burn that out at all gotcha. you know sometimes you just know I, this, you, I gotta go all in do we have any questions for but um, anyway uh, but outside of that I don't think that's smart and so for me while I had the initial capital to pay my franchise fee and do some other things mm -hmm. um, when it got time to fund the whole project I decided to get an SBA loan mm -hmm. because I didn't want to tie up my own money in that and then that way that that goes back to you know having an LLC or a business or so forth uh, to to protect your business from you personally. You know if for some reason this smoothie can't taint, mm -hmm. I would have protections under that LLC where the LLC could file for bankruptcy or the LLC could restructure, gotcha. and I didn't affect my retirement savings, my four hundred one k, and all the other things I had worked so hard to sort of keep, hold on to. So it's always, not always, but if you get a really good interest rate with it, which the SBA will give you. Um, it's better to kind of play with somebody else's money instead of your own sometimes and so honestly that's what I did so I made a strategic choice to get along um, uh, to do this business gotcha mm -hmm. so to recap for those um, tuning in um, could have used our own capital we had the sufficient funds to be self-funded but I've always heard the rich get rich by using someone else's money I, I can't <laughs> say that's true yet but tune in later for <laughs> tune in later. Okay, we'll have her right. for the follow up. We'll, we'll she's see. I am her tenth store. But yeah, no, I am. I am certainly taking that approach. I actually started this business sort of right as I was getting married, and so you know, you think about that. We're getting married, so now I have you know someone else to think about mm -hmm. in terms of the risks that yeah. I was taking. My husband is an entrepreneur as well, right. and so you know, so you don't want entrepreneurs in the house. I know. And so <laughs> we, should, we need a reality show, yes. but um, but you know I didn't I didn't want to do that, and I think it's okay not to do that. I think people think if you start a business and you need a loan that you had to, and that's not the case. You know, be strategic about what makes sense for you. Um, and in this instance, uh, it made sense for me to sell fund what I could and then borrow somebody else's money to do the gotcha. rest. Gotcha, makes sense. So for those just tuning in, this is not a declaration to go borrow hundreds of thousands of dollars just to say, I want to own a business right now. Uh, have a plan, yeah. have a strategy, have some capital to fall back on as well. For sure. Um, but don't just say, hey, I want, I'm tired of working for the man, working nine to five, and just go get a million dollar loan and throw it at a business. Man, yeah. Have a strategy, have a plan, um, have a cash flow statement and everything like that. So, yes. um, great comment there. So you mentioned your husband. Tell us about work-life balance with two entrepreneurs that are actually working. <laughs> so for us, I think it's still a seesaw. <laughs> ah, gotcha. So I don't know that we've uh, uh, found a perfect balance yet. Mm -hmm. um, we've been married three years. I said I started this one, uh, so I've been doing this for three years, sort of went out on my own. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you live and you learn. I do think we find balance in that. We both uh, do a really good job of carving out time uh, to watch TV together, mm -hmm. go to the movies, have a dinner date travel watch the debates together watch the debates together <laughs> and live tweet about that um but here's what's important and it's it's actually something that um i did in law school i'm sure you did the same thing when i was in school i never ever worked on a friday night or on a sunday morning i protected mm. friday nights to have fun mm. and i protected sunday mornings to go to church mm. and so when i even when i was studying for the bar that that was like not negotiable and in life and in, in business you know working for a company and now working for myself i try to still preserve those moments mm. and they might crop up at different times during the week now because as a business owner you kind of have to make yourself available as right. you need to because you're wearing so many hats at once tell you know, them about people, those hats people i don't think people get it you no. know in a corporation if you have an hr issue you go to hr accounting issue you go to your accountant when you're an entrepreneur it's sort of all on you but anyway we carve out time to protect that time and we will treat you know wanting to watch you know a reality show together on a thursday night with the same way we would protect a business meeting with a client it's important gotcha so tell us about how the jm cardi brand connects with other women Oh, wow. Is this a question from the audience? This is a question from the audience. Oh, cool. I love that women are asking questions. So I will say this. Uh, my store manager is actually um, a woman. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And I love that. And I tell okay. her all the time that being able to give an opportunity to somebody like me is uh, is so amazing. Um, Jam Cardi Holdings itself is sort of a if you th it's a, more of a privately held company, so I don't have to do a whole lot of marketing of my business because I, uh, you know, it's it's where I house the businesses that I buy. So my relationships are with franchise owners. Yeah. So I'm not earning anyone else's business. But what it does do, I think, on a larger scale for women is, is it is a women owned a woman owned business, wholly owned woman owned business. Nice. Nice. And, and did you get your certification and things like that? Yeah, okay. I'm working through that. I'm working through that. And so so I'm not quite there. So if you look me up, I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm working through that, that gotcha. piece of applying for that. Um, but it's a woman-owned business. I think that does a lot of things because for when I meet other women specifically who are interested in franchising, who want to understand, you know, um, what it is that I do and how I got there, I share that very transparently. Mm -hmm. And I hope, you know, with a view towards a nonprofit arm to this, to be able to educate young women and girls about you know the businesses that I have and 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 and, and what I do, um, I I lend my time very generously, especially to other women who are interested in getting into business or franchising, um, and I hope to be able to do that on a larger scale as my business grows, Amen. and so I hope that answers um, uh, the question. But um, I do. I would like to see stronger connections with what I do to uh, for other women. You know, going forward. Gotcha. Awesome. 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 So tell us a little bit about um, your nonprofit and what your goals are for that, and how you're going to tie in your conglomerate to that a little bit in more detail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in my mind, my view is this. Um, uh, like I said, I'm I'm very passionate about women and girls and mm -hmm. their issues and things like that. I am, on a personal note, you know, I experienced you know the loss of my parents when I was very young, and I was raised by two aunts of mine. I sort of lived with them at different stages in my life, and um, didn't have a father figure, if you will, for that reason. And so, because my aunts were unmarried, and so um, everything we had to do around the house was on us. So if it was an outdoor chore, mowing the lawn or anything mm -hmm. like that, fixing something, like we did it, it was always the girls. And so there's a power in that. I recognize that, and I don't think every woman maybe always appreciates that. And it's not that you can't be married and be complimented by a man and sort of share these things, but um, right. you know there is a there is a real strength and value in us. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I think about the little girl that I was and sort of where I am now, and where I got my life lessons and mm -hmm. you know even my gumption to do what I'm doing now. Um, I got it from other women, you know, my aunts, other women in my family. And so um, I'd like to have a nonprofit that supports, initially, supports other women and girls initiatives that are making a difference mm -hmm. and then come up with, you know, ways that we can make a difference on our own, whether it's providing jobs or job training or what have you. Okay. So kind of like an incubator. Yeah. Okay. That is awesome. I actually know some people she may need to connect with, Myra Shaw. Jalila Nicole and Christy Staples. Oh, yeah. Be sure to contact. Yeah, I definitely will do that. If y'all are watching, we'll make that connection happen. That's what we're really all about connections and uh, yeah. making that networking happen. Tell us, speaking of that though, tell us a little bit about how networking has played success in your business. Oh, man. You know, I always tell people you never, so you network, right? Because you don't know who you're going to meet and right. you want to sort of market yourself. But in networking, I think it's also so important who is maybe noticing you. Because you may not always know the right people to introduce yourself to. Um, but I want, I would say through networking is how I met you. Tr Tristan's mm -hmm. agency ensures my business. Yes, indeed. And um, through introducing you to others, I'm sure, you know, and, you know, I, I met actually another interested uh, Smoothie King franchisee through you. She saw the pictures Crystal. you put up last year. Yeah. Yes. Not just Crystal, uh, some others. Oh, really? I have like three now. Awesome. Yeah, and I've all been so <laughs> So, you know, um, it's important because if you just take that snapshot, mm -hmm. I meet you, you come to my store opening, mm -hmm. you post a picture on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It inspired at least one one other um, young lady shared with me that it was seeing that photo that made her say, "I'm gonna do this." Wow. Then she hit you up and was like, "What's her number?" And then she and I went to lunch, and she's now an approved franchisee, and she's getting wow. ready to buy into Smoothie King. That's crazy. So, by way of example, mm -hmm. I hope that it, uh, illustrates the importance of networking and talking to people that you don't even think you'd need to know. Um, because you just never know what area they can fit into your business. Right. You know, and it doesn't hurt. And it. I think when you make those connections for other people, it pays itself forward. It does. It does. Um, I believe yeah. Kevin Spacey said, as you're going up on the elevator of success, be sure to bring it back 
send it back down when you reach the mm, top. That's good. You know, that's good. Yeah. And I've always been taught, even through um, my internship program in Rhodes, you know, as you're being pulled forward, reach your hand back to be able to pull someone forward with you. So, uh, for those already in business, keep that in mind. Those aspiring to open your own business, it's enough to go around for everybody. Make sure that you're giving back to the community. That's why you always hear me say, unity within the community. We can all be successful. Absolutely. Uh, we can all grow together. Uh, you know, the team I have, we're all about helping each other grow. Um, I kind of, you know, I always put a little something funny in my interviews. You know, think of your business as Atlanta rappers, not Houston rappers. <laughs> <laughs> Atlanta rappers collaborate, DJs, things like that, mm -hmm. and they help propel each other up versus local rappers where it's like, oh, they're on that side of town, I'm on this side of town, I'm going to do my thing, they're yeah. going to do theirs. And, you know, you don't have as much success from Houston rappers as you do um, local rappers. So just keep that mindset in mind. Collaboration is king, and as long as you can help others, it can be a win-win, kind of like the team effort that she has in place. I'll keep that in mind when I work on my album. Okay, when you know, I, I can do the beat. I got a videographer, too. Cool. <laughs> Power of networking. Power of networking. So we're coming to a close. Um, what advice would you have for entrepreneurs and those aspiring to be entrepreneurs, specifically those looking to own a franchise? instead of maybe starting a concept business? Yeah. Um, my biggest piece of advice, I thought you might ask this question, so I thought about it all day. Um, you, here's what came to me. You are the only person standing in your own way. Right now, you might have, so if you're thinking about it, you're at your job in corporate America or wherever, right? And you're thinking about this thing and maybe you're tuning in and you're thinking, ah, finances, you're thinking, ah, but you know, this is happening. Oh, my wife is, we're gonna have a baby. That's smoke and mirrors. Mm. You're the only one keeping you back from doing what you need to do. Right. I'm a woman of faith, so I believe that God will make a way. If you put the idea in you, I don't think he would do that for naught, right? Right, right? And so you have to trust in that. There, that's a huge element of it, and people don't wanna talk about it because it's kind of touchy-feely. It's not a framework. I'm not telling you, go to this website, click this button, and do this, and then you can become an entrepreneur, right? right? It's not right. a hard, there's not a formula. Nope. Um, and there's not, you have to accept that there's not a formula, and the formula that works for you is gonna be different from how it worked for somebody else. Trust the process, uh, trust your instincts, and um, uh, develop a network of people. Be smart about the business you're mm -hmm. going into. Certainly do your research. Uh, certainly you know, get the requisite advice that you need. Mm -hmm. But then when you've gotten all the advice you can possibly get, because some people overthink this for years and Absolutely. they talk about, oh, I'm yeah. thinking about it. Just jump, leap, you know. Uh, Steve yeah. Harvey's been talking about that a lot lately, jump. the jump thing. You know, like, just, just do it. That's so important. And I don't want that to be lost, and I don't want that to be negated as some sort of fluffy thing. It is so important. I wake up every day and jump off a ledge, literally every yes. day. If they only knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, let me say this last thing. I think it was, Whoop no, it wasn't Whoopi Goldberg. It's not going to come to me. I, anyway, like, yeah. I'll have to update. Okay. Somebody, okay. but here's what they said. You are not doing the right thing unless whatever business venture you're trying to do makes you feel like, you you, you know, a little bit of peas running down your leg. Wow. And I love okay. that because when you, so if you're feeling a little bit like you got to go, that's probably that you should go, okay. right? <laughs> and they were saying the key to true success, it's, it's sorry, that's an Ayanla, that's who it was. It was Ayanla okay. Van Zandt, okay. she said Fix that. Your life. Fix yeah, your life. I heard that months, yeah, I heard that months ago on one of her shows and uh, I thought, it's pretty accurate. Pretty accurate, yes. okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on today. Um, how can they contact you? Um, phone, email, website, how would you want, well, share what you want? Yeah, so my website is uh, uh, jmcarty.com, that's J as in jam, M as in man, C-A-R-T-Y.com, and my contact information is on there. There's a email address, it's simple, it's just info at jmcarty.com. If you have questions, think about starting a business or getting into a franchise, I'm happy to answer your questions. And the address for the Paraland flagship location if they want to stop by and support? Yeah, 2800 East Broadway Street. So we're in Old or East Paraland. So you would take the Beltway to Paraland Parkway. We're at the corner of Paraland Parkway and Broadway. Okay, excellent. So if you're looking to become a franchise owner, um, please share this video with all your friends. You can look at it on YouTube. In a few days, we'll have the um, fully edited vision version up but I want to say thank you Fern, for coming all the way up here from thank Paraland because we're in Cyprus and um, hopefully this was beneficial for you all um, that's the purpose of these boss talks is to help the entrepreneurial community um, take it to the next level so we also will see you all this Saturday at Boss Brunch yeah.